This is a tutorial on how to make uh, this. So I've been looking online and found a few different tutorials in how to make this kind of animation shader and it's kind of the same thing that I used back on the Endless Engines video, which I still haven't done the tutorial on um, yet. So it, one day, one day. But basically, I've used what I did there and found a few other bits to make this cool sort of shader thing. You can make some cool sort of 70s grindhouse looking things. So we're just gonna start by obviously deleting everything that we've got here. Uh, I'm gonna be really lazy and just download a 3D model from Sketchfab because it's a lot easier. Um, we're doing a lot of stuff with skulls, so we'll just stick with that. So, and take the default skull. There we go. Cool. So, just to start off, the main thing that you need to know is you have to be an EV for it, uh, and you also are going to want the Node Wrangler. So, just make sure in your preferences that you have Node Wrangler selected. Once we've done that, obviously we'll just go to the skull. So. The main thing I want to keep is probably the normal map, just to keep the bump, but other than that, the, the colour itself we're not going to use. So, same as last time, in here, just add the colour ramp. I know that there is a search function to do this quicker, but I just never remember it. Uh, my shader to RGB. Add that into there. So, we're going to change this to constant. Going to add an area light as well, just so we can see what we're actually going to achieve. Scale it up. Set it to like 50. So we've got no light at the minute, but if we slide it down, we can see that that's working. Bring this forwards. And just bring up the light a bit more. Okay. So two things that I've found that are a lot more useful in getting the look that I want to achieve is on your actual light sources to get this look, you want to set your contact shadows on. I just drag everything up basically. Um, and then you can see we've still got this kind of like gradient fall off that I don't really want. So if we go into your main scene panel, turn off soft shadows instantly gives it like a threshold look where the shadows are just thick, they're there, there's no gradients anymore. That really helps achieve the look. Uh, I'm gonna just set my shadows to like full as well, like size, just so we get cleaner looking shadows. Now, once we've done this on the shader, to do the anime shader thing really easy, you can just slide across, add a new color, get the mid color for it, drag it up, and then pull them across. There you go. So you just adjust your color run basically, and then you can change where your highlight section is gonna be, where everything else is gonna be, and this is already like quite a cool look. The thing I found is if we get rid of that one and just keep our highlights and shadows, So we're going to use a Voronoi texture. So this basically gives it like that stiffle shading. So the kind of dots in between the highlights and the shadows. Because obviously if we get rid of the normal map for a second, you can see how everything's just like blocked. So we're going to plug our Voronoi into our base color because we don't really need that anymore. And on here, we just press Control T. That brings up your texture coordinates. Then you go to object to your mapping. So you'll notice that not too much has changed as of yet. So let me just slide back up on the color ramp. Okay, perfect. Then we're just gonna drag the scale up. Now, obviously the higher the scale, the smaller the dots are gonna be. So to go for that sort of stiffle shading, 
or the sort of dot work stuff. You want to slide it up quite high. So I'm going to do, let's say 300. So now we've done that. If we move across to our color ramp, you can obviously adjust how intense or far off that that's going to be. So that is basically how you achieve that look. It's very, very simple. Obviously you can add different colors in. If you want to change the color of the skull or the object you're working on, you just adjust your colors in the color ramp. So again, we can bring up the shadows here and set them to like a blue color. Instantly, you've got some like sort of printed old school look. So the next thing that you can do to take this to a bit of a better level is what I've been doing as well on the anime stuff. First, I was just kind of using the standard grease pencil, putting it in, setting it to line outline, and it looked quite good. But what I found is there was this plugin, which I'll show now, um, which I use, which has been very, very useful. So basically, you just append So we're just going to append this line art in here and make sure our skull sits in collection one. And you have to have a camera. Don't have a camera, it's not going to work. So we'll just go from there. Okay, so we're going to set our scene to the first collection, set our camera to camera. And as you can see, we've already got an outline there. It's a little bit jank in some areas. Um, I found that with this plugin, Turning off flatten in camera gives it a better result instantly. Uh, and what you can also do, I don't know if this works or how this works, I just always set the resampling detail to higher. I set these angles to around 80. Again, don't know why, it just always seems to work better for me. And then we're going to change the minimum and maximum size. So as you can see, if I change the maximum, put it to like 20, you can see like the outlines and the blobs. It's quite bad. So 0 0.4 gives us that nice outline. And then we've got the minimum lines as well, which are the ones like inside the skull. Now there are some lines that aren't quite lining up. So what I'm gonna do, look at it, right, okay. So we're just gonna bring down the minimum size. And then I'm just going to make sure that our camera field of view is set back because I found that sometimes some lines at the back of the skull or object I was using wouldn't load. So yeah, there you can see, now we've got the outlines, we've got the stipple shading. And then obviously it'll take forever on my computer to load as we move it around. The line works there. And if you want just that standard anime shader style like what I had before, you can just remove stiffle shading from it go into here add your bid color bring it back bring that back set that to the same blue and just make it a little bit darker and set this to a slightly lighter shade of it and there you go that's pretty much everything in regards to it. Same with cars, everything. That's what I use to achieve that look. So the next thing I'll show you is how I achieve like a sort of stop motion animation look. Because when I render it out, I just do 24 FPS. I just do it in EV, render it as a PNG, and then drag it in to DaVinci basically. So I'll just show you on DaVinci how I go through and do that. So now we're in DaVinci and we've just got the blank page open. I make sure I go to media, uh, not media pool, sorry. I'll go to the edit tab. So whilst we're on this tab, I can then just go through. Then I can find the PNG sequence, just highlight all of them. Just drag and drop that into DaVinci. So again, this skull was the same as what I've just done. I just left it white, underlit it. I didn't actually use the outline on this either. Uh, when I press play, just rotates around 24 FPS. So what we need to do to achieve the sort of old cool look is when we go into fillers, just go to stop motion, 
this is kind of cheating and you can probably do this in Blender by rendering out a different time mapping but I just found that this way was just extremely easy. So you just drag and drop your stop motion on top, set the frame repeat to two and when you press play you've got that stop motion look. It's so simple and so easy. So the other thing I found is there's this free plugin that I use. So let me show you on, we just go to effects and put an adjustment layer in. And then if we just go to our color tab on here, I'm gonna scroll down. This one's just called Filmbox Lite. It's super easy to use, gives you like great looking footage and it's free, the, well, the light version is anyway. What I got here, just drag, drop down, go to inaccurate colors. So it just doesn't add any sort of like yellowing of the film. And we're just gonna set the style to full. And then I'm just gonna drag up in lab the vibrance and the contrast of it. So as you can see already, it adds like the film grain, the sort of shake to it, which is great. Then what we can do is just add a generator. So like, let's just pick a four color gradient, put this on top. I'm just gonna set these all to like, just a sort of slightly up green and yellow color. Like that. Then when we go to settings, As you can see, just by playing around with a composite mode, you can get some really cool effects. So then that's kind of it. You can just take the footage from behind, scale it all up, press play, that's it. This has worked with like my cars or my animations. I basically use all of the same stuff for everything I do. I'll leave links down obviously in the description to like the pages of where you can get these plugins. Most stuff I use is free. The only thing that I think I had to pay for was the line art modifier. Um, but again, it's super worth it. It's so easy and you definitely get better results than you do with a grease pencil. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Cheers guys.